Um, oh, I know your IP address. We know where you live. Okay, but then, <laughs> you're that guy. That's a little, but, but it's a dynamic IP address. You could speak by it. No, you probably speak by it. You go to Google Chrome, but you just translate it. You should probably look into that for your personal security. Translate everything you want. Now I'm going to link me to get in by Excuse me, students. I speak. Chicken speak. Golly. The reference. <laughs> Just let go and see what emerges. Yeah, I'm loving it. I love it. It's not a binary. I'm perfectly happy being let off the hook to make all things happen. I almost went back to bed this morning. It was close. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. My wife gave me the baby because of the bottle right as we were running out the door at like 10 to 8. I'm sitting like I've been like, are you sucking away in that baby heaven? I'm like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> Shalom, <laughs> Shalom, 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 I am asking my daughter, I am asking I want to share with you a, um, a passage from a cook in his um, uh, 
Oh, Takodesh, Ahem Shalom. That, that, uh, I'm just reading through it um, <coughs> recently, and uh, when I... Uh, could you turn the fridge off? Now? Um, <laughs> and um, there's a passage which just so much reminded me of what we were learning last time that um, I want to share with you. I'm sorry, I don't have copies for you, but um, I think you'll be able to follow. It's not too long. The thoughts of Tzadikim. Marbei HaShalom Ba'olam. Marbei HaShalom Ba'olam. Hamedabrim Tov Al Kol Biyuya. Hein Vasmot Et HaNeshamot Kulam. Mipne Shehein Mit Arvot Veskulatam Im Kulam. So the Machshavot of the Tzadikim, if you remember, right, last time we were in um, the Pasuk, which uh, describes the Anavi as being your Sheha Aretz, Vihit Angu Al Rov Shalom. Vihit Angu Al Rov Shalom. There was a new concept for us of, of Rov Shalom, uh, which seemed to be a, uh, a broader um, a broader sense of uh, of uh, of, of what shalom can can include, that it includes the earth itself, that the uh, anavim are themselves then, um, in a sense, m merged with the planet in a way uh, which which is a, a, a profound reflection of the nature of what it is to be an anav, which is to be a um, a, a human being whose awareness is one of uh, of simplicity of, uh, of um, equ equivalation, of non-hierarchy. And so uh, the Anav experiences the, um, the aspect of life, which Avraham Avinu described as afar va'efer, afar va'efer, um, which Chazal referred to when they say that uh, someone who is kovea makom uh, tefila, so is, um, he, uh, it's like Avraham Avinu, Abraham and it's said of him when he passes from this world, hey Anav, hey Chasid. If you remember, we spent a good deal of time to, contemplating that that statement of Chazal, hey Anav, that Abraham was an Anav, and the Anav of Abraham is reflected in his is in his description of himself as being afar. So that someone who's who's in a state of Anava, and it's really a state, it's a it's a whole uh, conception of how how life is. So his his reality of anava merges him with uh, with the earth in a way in which then he's marbe shalom, um, uh, or he experiences rov shalom, rov shalom, which is the greatest bliss. Fit angu, al rov shalom. The the rov shalom provides a bliss which is called which is the oneg of uh, of this rov shalom, which is a which is an oneg as we explained last time, which comes by virtue of Merging and completion, as all as all owning really does, pleasure is uh, as a result of this kind of uh, kind of an experience. So, so um, so it just struck me very strongly when I was reading this that 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 it's likely that Rav Kook was was contemplating uh, that verse, or at least it was there, even though he never mentions it. So I wanted to share this uh, passage with you. So he begins with talking about the Machshavot of Tzadikim. And those thoughts of the tzaddikim, uh, uh, the tzaddikim are marbe shalom ba'olam, marbe shalom ba'olam. And they speak tov al kol birya. They are um, always speaking, it's just like so rich, but they're speaking good of all creatures. Uh, and this, um, uh, this is what they do. Now he goes back and describes what their machshavot do. Their machshavot and their vasmot et haneshamot kulam. They, they uh, sweeten. They um, perfume. perfume. Yeah, perfume it all the neshamot. Mipne mipne shehein mit arvod b'skulatanim kulam. Because because they their thoughts, the thoughts of the tzaddikim, become merged with the skula of um, of, uh, of of all of those of whom they are thinking. 
In other words, they become uh, at one with the uh, aspect of each creature that they've um, set their thoughts upon um, in their sgulati, in their in their most preci- precious um, aspect. The ha'iruva sikhli, and um, for for these sadikim, the the merging, which is a mental merging, hurak totsa'a meha'iruv hamamashi. It's simply a um, a uh, product of an actual uh, merging. So that actual merging, I think, is what we've been describing. That that because they are um, very uh, conscious of of uh, the common commonness of being of all uh, of all being. So um, they they know that iruv mamashi, and so their machshavot are a reflection of that. And then that's mevaseim, all of the uh, neshamot that they are thinking uh, thinking about. The oto hametek v'hanoam, and that sweetness and pleasantness sheyesh benishmoteihem and kudashot shalat tzadikim that they have in their souls, yishrei levav, who are um, of straight heart or or um, directness of directness of heart. Hadorshim tov le'amam, right? A reference to the tzaddik Mordechai, or the resh tov for their people, l'chola itzul kulo, and for all of creation. Mit mazegim kolam etziyut kula. Then, um, then uh, that metek and noam now merges with all of create all of all of uh, what is real. Vakol mit pasemu mit alev akarov karov elehem mit pasem yoter min noam, and uh, everything then becomes uh, sweetened and perfumed and rises up. And that which is closest to them, meaning that has uh, of the greatest uh, relation to them, it gets that um, in, in first and gets it most. And so, so the Ikara Bisum comes first to Israel. Avlikar Pulazo Ba Mikdushat Eretz Yisrael. The, um, the ability to do this comes from a very special uh, power that, that um, the land of Israel has, the sanctity of the land of Israel has. She has this power to uh, bring together um, all of the lives of souls because of her unifying power. of your the uh, life of souls is the is the heir of uh, of your land. I'm not sure what the source of that. Avir no. is not a word. Avir artzeich. Adopted from air. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dwell on this, just wanted to share. Yeah. Can you move your phone? Yeah. <laughs> hey, like could, you, could, could, you sum, could you summarize that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I did, first of all, I brought it just because it, it struck me we were on, you know, in a, in a common space with Rob Cook, so I was, I was happy with that. And primarily, it was a, um, a description of a, um, of a stance of mind that a tzaddik has. And the stance of mind that a tzaddik has is that he's um, he's looking at at what is the toe of each virya. That's what he sees. He sees the toe, um, and and by virtue of that, so the birya upon which he is setting his gaze or ultimately his, his mental gaze uh, becomes perfumed meaning that their 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 goodness becomes uh, the accented not just by not just you know in some essential state but apparently it then begins to Expressed. diffuse itself and express itself so by virtue of his his mode of thought and his focus he produces this bisum and that uh, bisum then then spreads and and um, 
and things begin to smell nice, which means their their expression is something which is a reflection of a deeper skula, which is not normally um, exposed, which is their um, which is their goodness. It um, sounds very much like um, like Rish Pebet in, in the Moran. Hmm? There's, There's also a like good a, of a... could be could be, but I think uh, in any case, what what then what then um, is is um, also elemental here is that they're Yishrei Lay. There's something completely integrous and authentic about them who are doing that. In other words, it requires of them that they not be miramim, which was the which was the uh, starting point of this whole motif that a person, yeah, that a person who's living on any level um, dis in, in disharmony with himself. Uh, produces disharmony in creation, so it requires uh, a yashrut halev, that's a tuna which is required here, and that there's something very uh, special that um, connects uh, the Jewish people to this point of tov and yosher lev, it's the name of Israel, it has to do with their yashrut, and ramech kulam tzadikim, there's something which, which is essentially uh, true about us, uh, that that we are carrying that into creation. And there's a, something which is shared by the um, qualities of this land also. Somehow this land um, inculcates that. And I'm sure that it has to do with this this land being the, the, the ground for all ground. It's the place at which the earth began to aggregate as a planet, um, so to speak. Right? You know, I'll say that that Zion, Michal Yofi, Zion is the um, incorporator of all beauty because it's the um, point at which all, all the, of, of um, that this planet began its um, expansion from, you know, the first point being Zion, which literally means just the point. Right, that's the point. So um, to be able to discover that point in oneself, which is what a tzaddik has, tzaddik is also Lashon Tzion. They're, they're associated concepts in the Kabbalah. Right? So he, he knows this Tzion and he looks at creation that way. He's looking at its starting point, which is the Tov, the original Tov of creation. That's what he sees. That's what um, enables him and empowers him then for things to be mikvasein. You know, when they expand from that point, so then they're perfumed. They're not soiled by um, all of the, all of the um, perversions that you know, the historical process um, is involved in. It's a very pristine point of notation. Um, and so, and so, the, this this land inculcates that kind of uh, that kind of being. That was um, that was the summary, and and it, and it spoke to me uh, just in terms of the, the description that we had last week of of, of the anav uh, in yore sha'aretz, and it's mm-hmm. like um, he really can. He not only can, but he really is integrous to the land, or it's. Um, Inherent to him, the nature of, of land itself. So he's your um, Yeah, but that's a result of where he was naturally. That's right. You know, this is his 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 conscious orientation. I don't know if it's natural or it's 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 focus. Or, you know, it's a, a work. It's a work that he works on. But, um, but the result of his, I would say, his work. You know, of, of bringing him, his awareness always back to that point, is that he becomes a yorish of the land, which is uh, which is quite extraordinary. And the whole thing is a very extraordinary vision that the anav is yorish at ha'aretz. I mean, when you think about it, that's not the way we usually uh, conceive of um, the meek Okay, right. Well, the the meek is is not is it's not, a, it's it's not, not it's English not, cultural. <laughs> Translation of what the of the Anavis, yeah. yeah. right? The meek inherit the land. It's not. And it's until not, they can give it over the Roman Empire, just take away for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not a joke. It's, it's neither meek or inherit. 
Right, yeah. exactly. Exactly. It's like the need will facilitate the strong in taking what they want. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very strong no place. Debate. Ananav is a very, very powerful person. Sure not nothing, meek. <laughs> not meek at all. <laughs> very, very powerful um, way of being. Being on a, it's but it's com it's absolutely and completely confident in terms of um, you know the kind of uh, emotional behavioral um, elements. Absolutely and completely confident, and you cannot you cannot shake the ana. You really cannot shake the ana, and you can't you can't uproot him because the world has your back. Because the world the world, the world has, has, your, has back. your back. The world has your yeah, back. Has your back. Like, you know the, the phrase, the "I've got your back." You know, like the, ah, ah, the, like right. the world has your back. The world has your back. Exactly, exactly. That's so why. What does that mean? The world has your back. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, uh, nature itself. That 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 when the experience of being yours, uh, of like being of from and within the the world and, and the, the arts, it's like your participant. It's like a total confidence because you're not disconnected from that, which is. The natural flow of the entire world. Like, I yeah, this is well. It. I would, yeah, I would say it's. I think sure. with the way we put it last week, uh, in a in a beautiful in a beautiful insight in the word of inheritance, which is Yerusha, is that it's inherent. In other words, the earth is not something which is uh, a place you stand on, or attempt to conquer, or possess from the outside, or possess from the outside. It's not a possession. The Yerusha is not a possession. The Yerusha is an inherent inheritance, meaning, therefore, that that um, in 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 the language that uh, Rabbi was using, no, inherent. no, not an inherent, inherent, not a heritage, inherent. inherent, meaning that it is of you. In other words, if you can cultivate a consciousness which is um, it's a, it, it which is a, a simplicity of being. Then, in that simplicity of being, you become um, aware of your being a part of the ground of being. And though you are anochi, which means that you stand horizontal, you stand vertical, anochi, anachi, nevertheless, I do not lose in being anochi my sense of being afar va'efer. So, at at, I'm at one with the very most primary uh, level of being, but I have a specific identity that grows out of that primal level of being, which is my anuchi. But my experience of that is not like, oh, now I'm disconnected from the place I've come from. But as we've described it in the past, I'm 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 like a gal, I'm like a wave which rises out of the out of the ocean, and so is of specific, um, a specific identity, but nevertheless remains a, a part of the ocean. Right? This is the this is the, the true nature of the gal. This is a mishnah, right? The one in Mishnayot which we which we recite, right? which people don't get the, the depth of this. The depth of this recitation, but one of the Mishnayot which we which we um, recite for for someone who's who's died, right, is um, is Machat uh, Shehinatuna al Maalat Ha Maalat Ha right? That if there's a a needle which is sitting on the um, on the ledge of a cave, right, Avara Leha Hagal, and you and you um, Move the um, mikvah mm -hmm. water so that the gal um, comes over the machat. Right, it's tohora. Aye, but there's no arba'im sa'a in the place where the machat is sitting. Yes, but it was it was drenched by the gal. Aye, but the gal isn't the mikvah. Oh. Aren't we talking about someone who just? passed on to the other world. This is Mamish, these are the Mishnayos which are said, it's so it's the end of Kalim, which which has an, 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 an anagram there of um, of of Nishama and all these things. But this is this is exactly, this is exactly what we're talking about, my God. 
this neshama was a gal in existence, which means therefore that that what it was remains what it always has been, which is a part of existence. And so this gal can purify the machat because it is a part of the mikvah from which it has come. It never separated from it. It simply has um, extended. extended, extended outwards and resubmerged re in. In the same way, the awareness of a person's um, eternity derives from that same experience of myself as being a part of a part of being which has extended itself out and then returns in. That your individuation was, was not definitive. That's right. Your individuation was not definitive and um, and uh, right. permanent. And, and, permanent. So, and therefore, when it's when its form is lost, you would then assume you cease to be. Right. right? That's not, not that way at all. If not, it's not the sole essence of what you were. Then, when when the individuation is lost, then you just return to a more essential aspect of being. Exactly. Exactly. And so this this is this is the this is the awareness that the that the ana uh, lives. Um, I'm, and in that sense, right, all, all of existence is, is well, I don't even know this phrase, is my back? Has my back. Has my back, okay. All of existence is, is, is supporting me, is push, pushing me upwards, pushing me upwards and holding me there for me to fulfill my mission as a expression of what it is. And therefore, um, when the time comes and it let go, it, let, it, it lets go, I simply resubmerge into it and become a, a part of the greater whole, which is um, which is a uh, you know uh, which is fine. Let's put it like that for now. But um, but the experience of someone who lives like that is that he is a very he is a very part of that of that existence. Now let's take that from this this very abstract existence. And as we always work with, with the with the nested realities of creation, now let's see how that you know like forms into a picture of the physical world we live in. In the physical world we live in, the representation of you know the ground of being is the ground, and the experience of uh, of being an anav is to be one who has emerged of that ground but remains nevertheless a part of it not something stalking the earth i am rather the earth's expression into a particular conscious being that's what i am absolutely absolutely i'm, I'm an expression of the earth in a conscious form and then when i'm when i'm when i experience things that way so then i am truly a Yorish of the earth. I mean, the earth has birthed me, so I am its inheritor. The Olam Yerushu Eretz. I mean, who can be Yorish the earth? Um, how can you inherit the earth if you don't experience yourself as being the child of the earth? You see how people get it wrong. People say, ah, they, they will inherit the earth. That means that they will take possession of it. <laughs> no, that's not. That's not what I mean. Once you once you see it that way, it'll never be laolam. Laolam loya laolam. It's only laolam because you understand inheritance <clears throat> to be that which you have received from your ancestor. So who is your ancestor if you are the inheritor of the earth? It could only be the earth itself. I mean, how else would you be the inheritor of the earth? Is there a way to somehow? make that make sense for the Jewish people in the land of Israel? Because it's totally. Well, you see, like me, we're part of the universe. first of all, it is universal. First of all, it is universal. First of all, it is universal. And Anavim, wherever they live, uh, live a uh, relation and are meant to re live a relation with, with this earth. The particular the particular um, gift of the Jewish people is meant to be this uh, sense of B'ni B'chori Yisrael, which we've spent a lot of time exploring um, in other contexts but like uh, that that to be the firstborn is the one who is the most primary carrier of that kind of an awareness that's why the main the main feature 
of the Jewish people is meant to be their anava. I mean, that's that's what that's what a Kodesh Baruch Hu says. I mean, he tells us why he chose yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. He says, You have the particular quality of being able to um, step aside from issues of hierarchy. And every time I give you greatness, you're mima'at yourselves. That's a reflection of the inherent nature of what it means to be Hashem's firstborn, ironically. But basically what that, what that indicates is that we experience ourselves as being the first. We have a very direct experience of having emerged from being itself. And so we carry that uh, awareness of emergence. Now, the, the, the particular gift that we're supposed to bring to humanity. That's one of the one of the great gifts of, that we bring to humanity is is meant to be that consciousness. Unfortunately, it becomes you know mixed up with being coming down, downtrodden, meek, all these other kinds of things, you right? Because all the psychological reactions to that. That's right. Of, of of being the suffering people and being the the victim and being all these other things, which are a distortion of our mm. of our uh, true standing the the truth of our standing is to be that that we become the aware element of of, of creation which knows itself to be the consciousness of crea of, of, of bria knows itself to be the consciousness of bria born of bria and um be, and okay now now i understand your specific interest the specific interest with the with the land of Israel and the specific relationship is, is quite clear now. Because the land of Israel is the first point of creation. As Chazal say, right, as we pointed out before, that it's Sion Michlal Yofi. It's the place where all beauty came from. Beauty being our ex phenomenal experience of, of, of reality. It all came from there. All the Midrashim about, about the Evan Hashtia, it's the rock that the planet aggregated out from, uh, et cetera, right? All of these things mean that, that, the, that, that the place on the planet, which is the physical manifestation of the, the, um, the, the Israel consciousness is this land. In other words, if we are God's firstborn, then we must be of the place on the earth, which is the planet's firstborn. So it's very simple. And so, so the place on the planet, which is meant to offer this kind of a vision, that it all grows out of one point, and that we all grow out of that. I mean, that, simply put, right, that, that there's one unity, which is the real teaching of unity. It's not monotheism, it's a stupid idea of one God. And that's not, I mean, that's like, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> the Egyptians, <laughs> probably the Egyptians, but that's not what that's not what it's the wrong word. It's not even the wrong word. We don't have a word monotheism. It's just the wrong word. It's like, it sounds like monotone and all kinds of boring things. Monochromatic. <laughs> <Right>, monochromatic. <laughs> but, no, really, but 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 Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Echad is a very rich concept. Echad is a very rich concept. That's, I mean, that's what you're supposed to be boning on every time you, you daven, right? Every time you daven and say Shema Yisrael, you're supposed to be miskaven. There's this, the simple silence, which spreads into eight uh, levels of, of uh, emergence, right? Comes down and then spreads out into four primary directions, right? Very beautiful um, thing I'm, doing. I'm about to tell you. I want to share. I guess it just came here. What am I going to do? I'll tell you in a second what I mean. But but that that sense of echad is of a very rich divine presence in the in the in the in, the, in, the, in a very multifarious creation. Okay. So when you see things that way, when you see things that way, then you are um, able to see the good. You're able to see the single beginning point that spreads you're able to live in this land rightly this is the beginning point and it spreads hey people it's not about displacing anything it's about it's about us becoming identified with our primary point from which all things emerge and then gifting all things with 
the bisum that Rav Kook is describing here, the sweetness, which 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 is their which is which is their entitlement, right? That's 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 really the dream. That's the vision. Right? Um, and and um, <clears throat> in that sense, it's 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 non-hierarchical. It's like a spread. It's a spread. But it is true. We're the lathe. We're the heart. And this is the heart point of creation. That is, that's a given. We're the skula. I'm skula, which means we're the that that precious point from which from which it begins. But it's a it's a very um, you know, it's a very energi energizing center point. Very energizing, like the heart is a very energizing center point. The heart is a ridiculous organ without the rest of the body. I mean, you'd be stupid to talk about the heart as being. <laughs> They're all pretty ridiculous without the rest. Right. Of the body. <laughs> In my true. brain, would be just fine without the rest of right. it. Right. But, the, but the heart, especially so. <laughs> the heart, especially so, because the whole. The whole tafkid of the heart is that it's pumping life into the rest of the organs. I mean, so, so okay. Well, then I guess you people are saying you're the most important thing in creation because you're saying you're the heart. I mean, okay. that's a one way to look at it, I suppose. But that's not the way we're supposed to be looking at it. That's not the way, right? This kind of a vision of anava sees it. Okay, so that 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 helps you in terms of um, understanding the relation. So it's like. Um, so that's why I mean, like what Rav Kook says, like you know, Avir Artseich. It's like the it's the uh, air of this land, which which, uh, which offers this. So that the, 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 the job of the tzaddik here is to be seeing the good sides of all of uh, all of the other folks who are who are living with. Yeah, definitely. The, the, the job of the tzaddik. Oh, it's a good okay. side. It's, I mean, it's like uh, is, is is it's a focus on the school up, focus on the school. I definitely think that's the case. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that means that he doesn't have other jobs too, but he, but that's a that's a stance of consciousness, right? It's a stance of consciousness. Uh, there was something that I I, I just wanted to sh share with you, which. Uh, which I'm sure will become relevant in a moment, but yeah. I just want to, like, in, in defense of the, the response, so I guess that means that you're, you think you're better than all of us. Um, I think that response comes largely because many, most of us really do think that that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of what I meant by the psychological game. It's not the yeah. sense of victimization, okay. but yes. how one... Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like, uh, yeah. The, yeah. Oh. I mean, it's, it's just very powerful for me in this context, the phrase that we say in Musaf, mm. right? Those are two different things, right? right? And it's often missed that I think it's a two-step process. You see it in, in, in Yeshua Shoptim and Merlachim very clearly, mm. is that, it, that, that Yeshua's return, so to speak, even though, of course, he'd never been there, we'll leave that aside, well, yeah. right? Well, he personally had, but you, you get my point. I mean, like, the, 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 a, a people returning to a land where they were not actually from, but returning to inherit it, right? right? It is, is uh, you know, that fixing of the Gilin Maratseno, but look what it leads to is, is Shoptim in this tremendous expression of the fact of how strange they actually were from the place. And it took settling in the land to reach that point of David, who was a genuine expression of the Malchut. Which is the potential to live. Totally. Right? Yeah. I think you see it on our site everywhere right now. This idea mm. that we, we're back, the fact that we're still arguing about the, the fact that we're back is, is, <laughs> is, 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 is the matter of the fact that we're still. We're, 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 we're still, still, still in shofting. Yeah, we're still in shofting. And, and a lot of the psychological devices is, is like, I think about in terms of the Bukhari, that my daughter, I know, um, my, my, my firstborn, is that when she receives the recognition of the fact that she's the firstborn, She's much more able to selflessly serve the needs right. of of the family. It, mm -hmm. it, it is it is when she feels that her position, which is she didn't choose, is intrinsic in the family, is really simply reflective of that's the way it happened. Forget like value. That's that's what I feel about like the irony of this. Like oh, you think you're better? No, like that's just the way it happened. Like not a value judgment. Somebody's going to be the firstborn, right? And but but, it's, but it, in receiving that that first of all self awareness. Which is 
finds expression in, in the relation to South. Side. Then she's much more capable of serving that role. And I, I think our biggest problem here in the relationship to South is that we haven't actually accepted the fact that, that we really are from here, and which would allow us perhaps to relate to the other people here in a more honest way, and perhaps not. I mean, we, the symptom, but it, what it would allow us to do is break that galut. The flip side of the, the oppression and victim side of, of galus is to the goyim. Right, like, like I, I'm superior to everyone around me because if I don't uphold that fact that I'm superior, I will never be able to survive right. mm -hmm. in 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 the oppression that 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 I'm experiencing, and and it's it's a fairly obvious psychological device, but one which is no longer serving us well. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Note that both both Yeshua and Gimoni and David and this entire process are very much aware that the minute you're perceived as taking from that process, in other words, they're not willing to ignore the, 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 the way it looks. No. And it's psychological. In other words, there's a real relinqu there's like a real relinquishing of, mm. of a certain uh, a certain personal agenda in order to be able to... Right, by dubbing Yoshua, because that's the thought in that concept. I think what the people are quite angry with Yoshua. Boy. Yeah. Like, come on, how come we didn't just leave Matya this net and like check these people? Like, you know, like what's the problem? You know, and he, he has a he has the Tzadik's perspective of what's really happening. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I hear, I hear this one. Hmm. What I'm just thinking of now is um, this uh, passage that's in the Zohar. I don't know if it's Zohar. Are you kidding? Truma. I mean, this is not this is not our home. Hot other musicians. It's very sure. So there were a few copies. Truma is often its own volume. No, it's not. There's so many. It's just like the mamish, the simplest one. No, but I'm trying to find the one that Sean is broken into a number of sections. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's not there. Okay, I'll start telling it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll start telling it to you. I don't even know if I should read it inside or just like what you what the, No, I should not read it inside. Uh, I know I'm going to get first. Oh, now you've given me a challenge to convince you that you're going to get what? Wow. Be that you can be, that you, yeah, no, no, you're, you're, you're going to understand this, are you? You're going to understand this. <laughs> okay. So, uh, just one second here, let me see if I can find this. Ah, I think about okay. So, all right. So, uh, so that we don't we don't experience ourselves as straying. <laughs> Let me just tell you what what what's happening. Right. So, um, so we're we're exploring this um, the sense of the anav being no arts. And we described last time, if you remember, just also to keep us in context, we described last time as the Anav deriving um, <coughs> his, his, his uh, selfhood, um, deriving his selfhood, experiencing his selfhood, the same way that an Ani um, in, in physical terms is impoverished of any superfluous additions. Superfluous additions, he simply survives. It's just what it is. Okay, we described last time how the Inui that Kalal Yisrael experienced in Mitzrayim um, brought them to that point so that they would eat a bread which is the Lechem Oni and their leader would be the man who's Anav Nikol Adam. Um, this is what empowers them to be able to be Yorei Sha'aretz, which is the whole point of leaving Mitzrayim, that their Yeru should be something which is not a add on to them in order to affirm some kind of importance or place in the universe, but rather is a uh, reflection of the truth of their identification with the ground of existence. 
that identification with the ground of existence is what then from there enables them to to ex to discover their particular identity their particular identity as Israel without it standing in contradiction to their participation in the allness of of of, of creation with only with that only with that will be able to be able to yorish yorish their 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 land only with that and that's why the inui is absolutely crucial to accomplish what HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Abraham was the whole point of, of Shibut Mitzrayim, which is in order to bring them into Yerushat Haaretz, right? So this was, this was um, you know, in summary, uh, what we explored, and we explored some of the, the aspects of how that's um, experienced, the oneg that that brings, and the rov shalom that that's part, participant in, and man as being the, the uh, conscious realization of creation and the specific the today the specific aspect of Yisrael which is an identity as being the Bechor of creation which is crucial in order for us to be able to be Yorish that land which is the Bechor of creation right? so all of these are all of these are are um, elemental in 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 um, in uh, looking at that we began to to uh, really to contemplate farther back right to the sense of 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 um, the one from which this has come and the um and um and the nature of that one which we declare and this is yes it's a bit it's a bit off it's a bit off the, you know the path but it's important for us to recognize because from that place of the singular beginning all things spread and that's the image if you remember in the past we saw that um in um in the teaching of of menashe hamelech if you remember and i was thinking about that exactly we're seeing this place where the bread it's amazing the place where the bread begins right. to bake it's we're one of the exactly we're one that's of the where is, that's where you make bracha exactly well, this is exactly right so this uh, has a lot to do with many torah that we we explored but but by, by you know in in um, in specific right an amazing it's an ama it's a it's a beautiful uh, avoda also where one of the Amorim says tomorrow we're going to talk about Menashe our colleague Menashe Chavreinu yeah. and at night Hamelech Menashe comes to him in a dream and says to him you call me Chavreinu do you know where you make the bracha on the bread from? And he doesn't know. So then he says to him, if you had been living in my times, you would have been picking up your coat to run after Avodah Zarah. The place you make the bracha on is the first place that bakes. <laughs> and he's gone. Amazing dream. So, so the Maharal explains that, that what he was telling him is that the adornment of uh, of um, of the phenomena of creation and its multifaceted presentation is what produces Avodah Zarah, because you just get so enticed by every energy point separately on the body, but separately, without a holistic vision. What you need to know, he says, is that the place of making bracha, which is the bria, bracha and bria are the same language, bet resh, bet resh, where things emerge outward, bar, things emerge outward from. The place of bracha must be the place first baked. If you don't make the bracha on the place first break, baked, then you will have no concept of how all of this multiplicity came to be from one starting point. But if every time you make a bracha, you touch that first starting point from which all things spread, and you understand that from there all things spread, then you'll never be enticed by Vodazara because you'll always only want to get back to the source and first point of all things that have spread. And now I'll give you the meditation for that. It's the word echad. Because what echad is, 
is the singular silent point of, of nothing from which there are eight extensions, which the Seder ones we're not going to go through now, right? the eight extensions downward. Right? It's the meditation through the through the um, through this through the sphirot downward, the ayin being the keter and the keter and chokma, and then bina bracha being the the beginning of the spread. Siyelabar. Right? Exactly. What? Exactly. This is the Russian of the Zohar, which we spent a lot of time in Rav Alman Levi. Right. Siyelabar, the the step outwards of bina, right, which is the source of bracha. Mm. In the kavanot of the Arid, it's the source of bracha. Is Bina. And then eight down. And then you get to the Dalit, which is the which is the spread of this world. If you will contemplate that, let's just let's just suffice with twice a day. Okay. If you will contemplate that twice a day, then you will then that's it. You will never be enticed by Vodazara. And I mean you'll have you'll get it all right. You'll understand what it means to be in the first place that's baked on this planet, which is here, uh, the, the land of Israel, and specifically the Kodesh Kodashim, or Makom Amizbeach, place first baked. If you if you will ex- continue to experience that, then you'll experience yourself that way, and then you're appreciation will be of all things spreading from here and you will become ex- extremely full of generosity Adkan. now i just want to want to add to this this beautiful meditation in the in the czar which um which which then takes that dalid and says the following it's a pasuk nishakeni minishikok piu kitovim do decha Okay, now listen to this. It's, it's half of it is unspoken, of course, and half of it is spoken. It's Megale Tefach Mechaset Fachayim. Okay, so the Zohar says the following. This is the beginning of Shira Shiri. My Kachama Shlomo Malka, the Iu Ayu Mile de Rechimu, Bain Alma Ilala Alma Tata. I mean, why did Shlomo Amelech begin um, his words of love? That are between the upper world and the lower world, the the Why did he begin his tale of the love between the whatever you call it, the divine and the actual, or the the um, the uh, non um, specific and the specific? the um essential and the essential expressed. and the expressed the um eventually we might say the spirit and the matter but we'd rather not <laughs> the upper and the lower why did shlomo why did shlomo begin his song about this relationship which as you see clearly immediately the Zohar assumes mm-hmm. that's what is being described here with with talking about the kiss of the mouth. Elaha ukmua, I'll tell you. The late Rechimu the Dvekut Rucha Berucha Bar Nashika. Because there is no merging of of um what's the I had yesterday? A, a breath with breath. Let's just leave it like that. Rucha berucha, not mm-hmm. spirit with spirit and not what other stuff. Rucha berucha. There is no merging of breath with breath, except in a kiss. Nashika befuma, and it's liminal. It's, it's something which is experienced at the at the at the uh, edge of the specific. It can only be experienced at the edge of the specific. The ihi mabua de ruchu mafkana di mafkana delay. It is the wellspring of the breath and the place where it emerges from. Okay. The kadnashkin daleda 
And when they kiss each other, then the breaths become emerged, merged in, in each other. And here you see, by the way, that the use in the Zohar of mitabkim is, is in union, is in union. This is a serious topic, which we'll put aside for now. I'll just you know, explain later why <laughs> I want to emphasize this. These breaths now merge with each other and become one. So is love one? V'sifra de Rav Hamnuna, still okay, Arye? V'sifra de Rav Hamnuna, Saba in the Kadma, in the in the ancient book of Rav Hamnuna, the elder, Hava Amar al Hai Kra, he said on this verse, Neshika de Rechimu it Pashat la Arba Ruchi, the the kiss of love spreads to four directions. The Arba Ruchi mit Dab Kinkhada, and those four directions or four breaths unify into one. Now we're Ruchi. now we're playing with the Ruach. with the with the with the with the word. The Inun go Raza de Mehemnuta, and these are, are very deep secret of Mehemnuta of the faith. The Salkin ba Arba Atvi, and it becomes expressed in four letters. These letters, now listen to the way this horse says, is unbelievable. These letters are the letters that the divine name relies on. In other words, we're about to look at the origin letters for Shem Havaya. And all supernal and lower realities are dependent upon these four letters and all of the songs of the songs are dependent on this ahava is the upper chariot that it is the connecting point the merging point the shalom and completion, the cola of all, of all. Then goes on and says, These unify and integrate the entire body and all of the limbs of the body into one and therefore award them great joy. There is no sadness there. There are four breaths in a kiss. Because each one is merged with the other. So there's the two breaths in your mouth and the two breaths in mine. One, one breath merges with the other breath. And that other breath then merges with my breath. And those two become one. Chad inun arba b'shlimu, and then they become four in fullness. V'navin da b'da itid kalilu da b'da, and they flow out one from another, and they are interincluded in one another, and they're interincluded in one another. And we'll just finish this amazing, amazing passage that goes on. I mean, there's there's a lot, <laughs> a lot here. V'kad mit parshim it avid mit inun arba ruchim chad iba, and when they speak, this is so much for us right now, to Bishvat also. Vichad mit parshan, and when they separate, or mit pashtin, probably the better gear, so to speak. So, it avid mi inun arba ruchin chad iba. These four produce one fruit. The ihu rucha chada de kali me arba ruchin, and this becomes one fruit, which then is incorporates all the four, the dasalik uvaka rakin, and it goes all the way up through the rakin. And goes into a hechal, which is called the hechal of ahava, and in that, from that hechal, then it gets raised up all the way upwards and upwards and upwards. These four letters are the four letters of those four breaths, and they are ahava. And the fruit of them, meaning in the lower worlds, is ahava. And when they join together, so there's awakened from each side. 
this side and that side. That's the Aleph. And apparently, okay, you know, apparently it's the two Yuds you're separated by above. Miyad Nafik He, then the breath comes out and the breath enables a merging. And then they become merged in love. And then they produce two other letters. In other words, the He is the breath, which is breathed out by the Aleph. Another possibility here is the first breathing, kissing the Bet, the other, the second, and the He is the point of emerging between them. And then it all climbs up and becomes the perfect love, which um, which is the way, which is the way it ought to be. Okay. Then there's there's um, there's more here. We'll stop with this. But this is like this this astounding description, this description of how nishikim are the um, are the uh, expression of love, right? That, but but note, right? That that the that the that the nishika that is that is being described is one which is a a, a point of merging, which must derive from the mouth, from the mouth. So you see that the, it's 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 the it's the it's the it's the uh, it's the point of 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 of, of expression. Of the entirety of the body in the mouth then becomes the merging point between these two bodies experiencing themselves as separate into one into one breath into one spirit but that dalit right that four that four directions now becomes such a um, a powerful image because the dalit of echad that spreads into the four directions can now be experienced as the four breaths of a kiss. And so the next word to be spoken after Shema Yisrael is Ve'ahavta, after the Shem Elokecha, because the Echad enables the experience of the love, that, that th then those Dalit become the point of intermingling of what had been experiencing themselves as separate and to one incorporation of one. Now this is the this is the great teaching of of, of Shlomo HaMelech, who was the Melech Shalom Shalom. So it's the Itkalila, it's the incorporation, which is the incorporative power of Shalom, which enables the experience of the Neshika to be this way, to become this act of merging and act of love. This is what I think is really is is, is what is 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 why. The next passage, right, which we read, right, which um, which is in which is in the Medrash, is that Shalom is Hakol, right? Matan Shalom elabale ha'anava, and then Gadol ha'Shalom shu shaku keneged Hakol. So now let me explain this. You see, because because what the Anav experiences, the Anav experiences this point of contact between worlds, in which his individuation is not something which stands above, but rather stands as an expression of. So he's very in touch with this first beginning point where, in a sense, upper world and lower world kiss. But now imagine living a life in which you experience yourself as being, as being the, the fruit of this kiss. You, you, you are this being of love. That's what you are. You're a being of love. And in being a being of love, you are one who lives on the, on the, um, on the boundary between what would be without love and without the breaths. The experience is two liminal realities which are not having a point of meeting. Then man becomes the, in a sense, the, Adam, the mixing of the breaths in a way in which those worlds are able to interpenetrate each other when he's when he's in, empowered to live in love by virtue of a consciousness which comes from Echad. You see how then that becomes mamish like an, it becomes an experience of life. I'm walking around, like to make it now, to bring it 
down to earth more, right? I'm walking around with a sense of 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 the of the these these breaths mingling in me, and um, and therefore I'm not not standing outside of it. I'm 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 mamish in it. That's like that that would, that that would that would be how the how the meditation goes. And then when I'm able to experience that and to touch that, so I'm able to experience the wholeness of the shalom, and then shalom becomes hakol. It's like everything. Everything's happening there, because everything in the sense that that all things here have merged. It seems it's the other half of the ani uh, apaveta of bishvili nivaulo, is that that if you have that sense of being outgrowth of creation. And in, in in the intimacy of connection and the world spreading out, maybe it's not the bishvili of for me, but it's, it's in the sense of through me, yeah, through, along, through, along my path. right, right, through my past, the world is coming into being, and therefore it's not some sort of like egoistic solipsism that like oh you don't know, you're all in my movie, right? But but rather you experience life as unfolding from within you right. in its fullness. Totally. 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 Mm. I can really, like, you know, I can really breathe, you know. It's like breathing becomes, really becomes an art of, um, of, of, of kissing. It's like, um, it's where Shalom becomes a place of, um, a place of Ahava. Now, what I wanted to wanted to also bring out is um, is uh, um, is how, how much how much yasem how much yasem lecha shalom is like so much a part of this 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 idea of sim shalom sim shalom it's like, sim shalom is is really the only way you can talk about shalom from this kind of a perspective and I'll explain what I mean and it's Seem, you can only really talk about yasem lecha shalom, and I know this from the way Rashi talks about ele hamishpatim asher tasim nifnehem. What is the meaning of ele hamishpatim asher tasim nifnehem? So, so Rashi explains there ele hamishpatim asher tasim nifnehem that you're to place it before them, place it before them. Yeah, well. The reason I want you to place it before them, as opposed to give it to them, is because it's meant to be for them a Yerusha. Meaning, Torah tziva lanu Moshe, mo rasha ki hilat Yaakov. How so? So Rashi explains, because until they reach out and take it and find how delicious it is, they will never know that it's truly their own and inherent to the nature of who they are. For if what you do is instruct them the actions without exposing to them how how delicious it is, right? This is Rashi, right? That's what he calls it, right? That's just, you have to give it to them with all the mat amin as a shulchan aruch, in the real sense of a shulchan aruch, where it's like, it's spread out before them as like a table of delicacies. And then each person is, wow, I, I really like that. That's, that's perfect. That's unbelievable how fitting that is. It's the means to uh, awaken in them a sense of this being really a part of them, inherent to them. And then they eat it and it really is a part of them, right? But the taste is very, very, very important there. You see how the language of lasim is to place it, which it's not imposed, but rather it's offered. In the same way, the melech must be som tasim alecha melech. What does that mean to som tasim alecha melech? Som tasim alecha melech means that the king must be an offering, an offering which is experienced as being a direct outgrowth of the nature. That's 
what it, that's what it is. Identity must be so much like this, this you know, gal that has grown out of. Mikerev achecha. Mikerev Exactly. Mikerev achecha. That's why the, the that's why the the, the uh, lineage is so crucial there. Mikerev achecha. But it really comes out of it really comes out of the guts of the people. It's got to come out of the guts of the people. Okay. In the same way, sim shalom can only be something which is achieved and arrived at by virtue of this process of integration. Now what we're discovering is that the process of integration which Shlomo HaMelech opens, Shlomo Melech Shah Shalom Shalom, opens his safer with, is this kind of a uh, experience of the Dalit, of the Echad, this merging of, of, of individual breath with divine breath. The, the world breath with, with, with the godly breath, whatever whatever language will, will be appealing to you. That's like, a, it's, it's a meditative language that I'm using right now, but there's a sense of the, the um, intermingling of my being with, with, with the divine being, that kind of an intermingling is the simat shalom. It's, like, it's, it's placed, it's not imposed, it's placed in something which has arrived at and achieved by virtue of the processes that have been gone through, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That amazingly produces initially a man whose name is <laughs> Dalid Vav Dalid. David, who is, who is, he's literally that. He's the Dalid of Echad as it has merged with the Dalid of Echad. There's, this 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 madrega of dodim here. All he is is the dalit. He's the dalit v'dalit. <laughs> it's like it's the dalit, which is what love is. The way the Zohar is describing it, it's this dalit, which is the this point of merging, which enables and empowers the two individuated participants to to truly experience themselves as being one one uh, one one reality. One and and that love being an emergent property. Of the meeting between them, you hear how this works. So that my mamish Davi becomes this is this is Davi. David is the man of love. That's exactly what he is. It's exactly what he is, and that his child is Shalom, because the child of love is indeed Shalom, and then he he sings about how this came about. Yeah, the Dalit of my father, which was the four letters of love. That's how I came to be. Kitovin dodecha miyai. Dodecha is David. They're better than yai. They're okay. I, I, I'm sorry. They're not just better than yai, right? They are good, the dodim of yours, because, because they of because they come from the wine. They come from the wine. The wine is the shiving panim, right? The wine is the 70, 70 expressions, which is the number we use to describe the multifaceted reality of creation. It's like 70 perspectives, 70 realities. His dodim. They are good because they come from there, not because they have imposed themselves, but rather because they've emerged from there. They've emerged from there. Is the they emerge from there? That's the malchut of Sima, of placing it. And then that is what leads to Isha Ken And it's a puzzle which, which you read just like a kiss. It circles back on it. circles back on it. Appreciating how it's Rav Hamluna Saba, whose name sounds like he knew that which talks about and he knows now it's just a song. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is part of my intention in Yeshayim, Ka, Yud Ka, for Yeshaya, Yeshaya, the name of my son. Where is he? Also, the connection of Shalom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the only clock I want. Me as well. Eleven oh five. The conceptual question on a meditative level—it seems like the most direct 
form of meditation would be through the mouth. 